I usually start with a foundation of what it is and then start with some really simple breath activities. It could be breath awareness, uh, belly breathing. I use uh, the Mindfulness Institute uh, for Emerging Adults, formerly known as KORU, uh, the mindfulness program in which I'm trained. I use that as a foundation and they have developed their program based on John Kabat-Zinn's mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is really well known here um, in the West. There are lots of other active ways that you can be mindful, mindful eating, uh, mindful walking. So it, mindfulness isn't always sitting and, and being quiet. Um, that's not always good for everybody. Some people need more active breath patterns, uh, lion's breath or dragon's breath or conductor breath. Um, and then the other thing I talked to um, Tufts OT students about is the evidence that underpins mindfulness here in the West. There's some evidence for physical improvements, managing blood pressure, decreasing uh, mental health status that might be impacting your function like anxiety or depression, uh, stress. It's definitely a terrific uh, stress reliever. They've done lots of studies with cortisol and looking at cortisol levels. And then in terms of function, uh, and you're talking about students learning, it can impact so many of the learning centers of the brain uh, associated with academics. So things like working memory, um, things like set shifting, we're talking executive functions. Um, and one of the most recent studies I've read it was in adults. Um, but it actually looked at the architecture, architecture of the attention networks uh, changing to be more efficient. That like blows me away. Mindfulness with this paced breathing and noticing thoughts, noticing emotions, but coming back to your breath uh, can really impact that, which is kind of exciting.